All right, hi everybody, She Detector here. So before we get into today's metal detecting video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the White's MX Sport and the firmware update. Um, so what you may not know is that, um, well, if you have the new White's MX Sport, you probably already know about the firmware update, but in case you don't, um, White's released the MX Sport and after they released it, they found that there was a problem with the firmware. And what that problem was, was that if you have two targets that were close together, the machine was not sounding two tones for each target. So you would sweep over one target and then if you hit another target right next to it, it was just making one continuous sound. It wasn't going beep, beep. It was one continuous sound. So the update is supposed to fix that so that when you sweep over two targets that are close together, you'll hear two beeps instead of one long tone. Um, now this particular machine that I have does not have the firmware update. So I'm going to try to see if I can um, test that whole tone thing. So um, yeah, now I, I've, I've not personally noticed any kind of difference or I've not noticed any issues while hunting with the MX Sport. Um, so so I, I mean, as of right now, I don't really see a problem with it. But um, I, I know that there's been kind of talk on the forum saying that more experienced hunters tend to not be happy with that, that they want to hear a tone for every target, not just one tone for a cluster of targets. So yeah, so we're going to try testing that out today. Okay, so I've got the MX Sport on and I do have the little light on because I'm in the garage and it's a little dim. Um, it's currently in beach mode, so my discrimination starts at negative 20, and I have my sensitivity set at 8, and I've already done a ground balance. Um, now, I, this is concrete, so I know that there can be rebar in there. So I went ahead and I checked, and I know that there's no metal right in this area. There is some over there, though. So, And I hope y'all can hear that, but just in case, I'll go ahead and turn up the volume a little bit more there okay so for my test targets I have two quarters um, so this quarter I mean I don't really think the dates matter but just in case you are interested this one is from 1978 and this one here is from oops, where is it? 2006 so I'm going to put one quarter there and one quarter there okay so again the the firmware thing is if the targets are close together it's only gonna well if you don't have the update if the targets are close together it does one continuous sound instead of two sounds so we're going to test that out and see what it does So it looks like there's a tone at the edge of the coil, right there, and then a tone in the middle, okay, so let's try putting it closer. So these are maybe four or five inches apart and I'm still getting multiple tones, so we'll try closer. This is probably about an inch and a half. Okay, I'm still getting multiple tones, so we will make them touch. So, okay, so if I'm getting a tone, so we should hear three 
three tones for the edge of the coil, the center, and the outer edge, I think. So. Like that, even when they're touching, when going side to side, well, I guess I am actually just getting one tone. Um, yeah, all right, so. All right, so we'll spread it out this way and see. So, if you go, if the targets are up and down, and you're swinging your coil side to side, from what I can tell, you there is only the one tone, but, um, I mean, I, I don't know, I honestly, I feel like any detector would do that, whether it has the firmware update or not. Um, so now part of the um, information that Whites has been passing is that if you are noticing problems with the tones and the targets, then you can send your machine in to get the update. You don't have to. Um, me personally, after doing this test, I mean granted I don't have a machine that actually has the update to compare this machine to, but this problem I don't really see it as a problem. Again, I'm, I know I'm not an experienced hunter by any means, um, but this is not something that would concern me, honestly. Um, so, so yeah, if you have the MX Sport and you know your machine doesn't have the update, I mean, it's really up to you on if you wanna send it in to get the update. Um, again, you know, based off of what I just did, I don't really see this is a problem. I mean, it's identifying two targets when they're side by side, except for when they're touching, but I mean, come on, I, I really feel like any kind of detector would probably do the same thing, but I really don't know. This is only the third detector that I've ever used. So, um, so that's kind of my take on it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if you have a machine and you've not sent it in for the update yet, do this test and see if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, then by all means, you know, just keep it how it is and do your thing. Um, now, I did also want to say that some people have asked me, will getting the update change how the machine behaves in salt water? No, it will not. Um, White has come out and said that, that it will not change how the machine behaves in salt water. Um, and so, I mean, you know, if, if um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty, that's, I don't really know what else to say about that. The firmware update will only correct it making the tones for targets that are close together. It won't change the behavior for any other setting or any other environment or anything. Um, so take that with um, however you'd like to take it. Um, now something else that I had wanted to try before that I haven't tested yet but I'm going to test now is I want to see how small of a target the MX Sport is able to find. So let me pick up these quarters. <coughs> and I have a tiny jewelry bit over here. And I'll see if I can't show that to y'all. But um, this, well, I'll put it in my palm. This is a little tiny piece of jewelry um, that you can put like on, you know, earrings or bracelets or necklaces, whatever. It's a little teeny tiny thing. And for comparison, I mean, although I'm pretty sure you can tell just by looking at my hand, um, here's a quarter, and here's the little jewelry bit. <laughs> so it is very, very tiny. So I'm just curious if it'll pick it up. And I do believe this is silver. It could be silver plated. 
So I'm putting it right there. So we'll see if it can pick it up. All right. Ooh, nope. It cannot. So let's crank up the sensitivity to 10. No, oh. It wants to. <laughs> so, a little bit. Let's try it in pinpoint. So, I'm in pinpoint. I feel like it's picking something else up. Yeah. All right, so what I'll do is I'll change it to prospecting because the um, MX Sport is supposed to be really good for gold prospecting. Um, so, prospecting. There we go. All right. I'll drop the sensitivity back down to eight. Mm, no. It's seeing something in the ground, very deep in the ground though, and it's registering it as a hot rock. So that is not this little jewelry bit. Yeah. Alright, so it cannot pick up little teeny tiny jewelry bits, um, but again, this was just a test just to see what it can pick up. Um, I'm going to put it back in beach mode, and I'm going to test a necklace, and I'm going to test my necklace. Um, it's a silver necklace, so this is it. It's uh, 925. Um, silver. So, pick up this little jewelry bit. There you go. And, uh, I'm just going to drop it on the floor and see if it can pick it up. Because I'm, I'm curious myself, because I don't know. So, here we go. So, it does pick it up, although it's registering it as f gold. Alright, so now I'm going to straighten it out because everyone has told me that it won't pick up the necklace, it'll pick up the clasp. So, let's see if it picks up the necklace. Yep. This is jumping back and forth between foil and gold. Hmm. All right. So yeah, so it can pick up my necklace. And um, it's not a very big necklace. I will put it up against the quarter for comparison. So here it is. Now they are kind of big links, I guess, and I don't know if you guys can really tell. I hope it's kind of focused for you. Um, they are kind of big links, but um, I mean, it's still a pretty, th it's a thin necklace. So let's see if I can turn it on its side so you guys can see that. It's maybe, it's not even as thick. Well, it might be just as thick as the quarter. So you can kind of use that as your comparison. And then here's the clasp there so but it picked up the necklace so I think that's kind of cool just like I said I've had a lot of people tell me that um, metal detectors in general don't pick up necklaces they pick up the clasps or the pendants now, I don't have a pendant on mine so um, yeah so that was pretty much all I wanted to show you guys before we get into the hunt um, now I'm 
by the time y'all see this video, um, I'll have already mailed the MX Sport back to Kelly Co. Um, but uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed hunting with it, and um, I love the double D coil, that's for sure. And I wish they made a double D coil for my Sea Hunter, but they don't. But um, yeah, I'm definitely a huge fan of that double D coil, and I've enjoyed hunting with the MX Sport, that's for sure. Um, I do like that it's waterproof, and I really wish, I really wanted to try and take it into some fresh water, and I wasn't able to. There is a lake near me, it's Lake Tarpon, but um, <laughs> I've talked to some locals here, and um, they informed me that Lake Tarpon does have alligators living in it, so <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to try messing around with that. Um, you can do water sports and stuff in Lake Tarpon, I know a lot of people go tubing there and such. But they do it in the middle of the lake, um, where the alligators, I guess, don't really hang out. They hang out on the edges of the lake, and it's dark water, so it's not like the ocean where I usually hunt. So um, I wouldn't, I, I would have to do like diving to be able to go and actually use this in Lake Tarpon away from the shoreline. And this is only good to 10 feet, and I'm not about to go diving in some dark water and I'm not gonna hunt on the shore of a lake with alligators. So, um, yeah, so that was the one area that I really wanted to try taking this that I wasn't able to. Um, White has said that the MX Sport is great in freshwater, and I imagine it probably is. You can crank the sensitivity all the way up in freshwater, and it's not gonna have the whole overloading issue. So, um, yeah, if you are a freshwater hunter or, you know, streams and rivers and stuff, I'd be willing to bet the MX Sport is going to do fantastic there. Um, it's not that great in salt water, though. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's good on the beach. It's good on land or, like, the dry sand and the wet-ish sand. But um, it's not so great in actual salt water, especially if it's moving salt water, which I'm probably all salt water is moving. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, and I think that's pretty much about it. All right, guys. Hi, everybody. She Detector here. So today I'm metal detecting at a little kitty play area that I've hit before. Um, I think I've come here twice before, and it was with the F-19 that I got from or the Fisher F-19 that I got from First Texas Products. But today I'm out here with the White's MX Sport. And I got this from Kelly Co. I think two weeks ago. And um, today will be the first day that I've used it pretty much anywhere other than the beach. <laughs> um, I've taken it out in the water twice, I believe now. And today I'm going to be doing some land hunting with it. Um, so I had originally wanted to hit that field back there it's like a big soccer field but um there's it looks like they're about to start some soccer practice so i won't be able to get out there today um i don't know i might try later on i don't know we'll see but i'm definitely going to hit this play area and over here in these trees and by this bench i'm going to check out um so yeah so i think it'll be a nice little hunt it's pretty nice out there's a good little breeze it's not super hot yet but it's supposed to get into the 90s today so um hopefully i can get all my hunting done before it gets too unbearable out here but yeah like i said i'm out here with the white mx sport and i'm also out here i've got both of my pinpointers i've got seeker and elsie this is elsie um, and this is from the gold digger metal detectors this is the lander c pinpointer and i have coated the tip of it here with some plasti dip and i took it out on the beach or on the boat with me yesterday and it did fantastic there's been no change to the coating on the tip and it's not peeling off or anything so it did really well out there and then i've also got seeker out here seeker is the garrett pro pointer at or the garrett carrot um, i've not used seeker since i coated the tip with the plasti dip so we'll see how it does out here today i've also got my digger shovel my um my treasure pouch i also got that from the gold digger metal detectors i've got my gloves out here 
Um, and I'm going to be trying a different mount today. Um, I know a couple of y'all had wanted to see the display on the MX Sport. So I'm going to try doing um, like a wrist mount. This way you guys can see it. And then you'll also be able to actually see me digging the targets. So we'll give that a try. Hopefully it's not going to be too noisy or anything or too shaky. So yeah, all right. Other than that, let's do some detecting. All right, guys, so I'm set up here. Um, I'm hoping the camera will stay relatively straight. It might kink off to the side, probably this way a little bit, just because this bone in my arm is where the camera is sitting, so we'll see. But, um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Ooh. I'm gonna lower down the volume a little bit. There you go. I think 10 is probably good. Yeah. All right. So now I'm still in beach mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it to another program. There you go. <laughs> still getting used to this. I've not really messed with the programs or anything. So actually, we'll go ahead and turn off my light if it'll let me do it in the options. There. All right, there, so turn off my light. So go back to my options. Mm, program, all right. So we could do all metal or we could play around in high trash. Uh, I don't know that I wanna do high trash. Let's go ahead and do all metal just because I'm gonna be on this little tot lot here and um, I'm not opposed to picking up screws and nails and stuff that I find. So we'll go ahead and do all metal today. And there we go. And my salt track is currently on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off because this is not um, a very mineralized area, so that's gonna be off. Uh, I'm gonna crank my sensitivity up. We'll go ahead and try 10, see what that does, so you guys can hear if it's very chattery or not. Um, my threshold was at zero, so I think I'll leave that there for now. I might crank it up later. Um, we'll see. But, all right. So, again, if it kinks to the side, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try and keep it straight, but I can't promise you. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and do my ground balance. Okay. Alright, so I think this area is pretty good. And you won't be able to see this, but, um, well, you might be able to, we'll see. Alright. So, for ground balance, you just hit the track button, you hold it, and then you pump your coil. Alright, so we'll just start over here in the corner. And there's in these um, little things they've got those big spikes or whatever so I imagine there's probably some kind of metal tracking on the bottom so yeah when I get close to that spike I don't know if y'all can really see it, but that spike right there, as I get closer to it, it starts making more noise. Alright, so I think you guys can probably hear the chatter. something here. Now I've never used it in um, in all metal mode it changes the tone the audio um, so it's not I don't believe it's as consistent or steady as it is when I'm in beach mode um, so I've I've not learned what it sounds like when there is a target. 
actually. Let's try it. Okay, so having it on sensitivity 10 all the way up and going over a piece of metal that's that big overloads the machine. Yep. So let's drop it down. Sensitivity 8. Yeah. All right, so that's what it sounds like. So let's check over here again. Where did we see it? Let's try the pinpoint. So I'm just going to hit it. Uh, nothing. All right, and you can also do it holding it down. Nothing. All right. So I don't know what it was picking up. All right. Well, so I'm going to go ahead and keep searching and I'll come back when I find something. All right. So I got my first target. All right. So it's pretty low. Well, it's jumping around a little bit. So let's try the pinpoint. Deep. This is saying about five and a half inches. All right, so it's right about here. Gonna move out all this crud. Let's pull up the pin pointer. something. No, not so much. Alright guys, so I got another target, and this one is really solid, and if the MX Sport is reading it accurately, I'm about to be very happy. I hope you guys can see that. That is reading, well, it was reading solid gold, but... I don't know, there's this little, like, a gum wrapper. Let's check it again. Ah! Damn. <laughs> so, this gum wrapper was reading solid gold. That's crap. <laughs> oh. There's something else right here. This is jumping around. I 
I turned off my sound on Seeker because there's a lot of people around and I don't want to piss anybody off. Where'd it go? Oh. Yep. Mm, it's like a piece of a can or something. Little teeny tiny thing. Alright, check it again. Yep, that was it. That was it. Alright guys, so I searched this whole area between this little wall here and the slide and this whatever it is. I searched all of this area and um, I did it in all metal mode. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the mode that I'm in and I'm going to try the high trash mode. So or the high trash program. So go ahead and hit that and hope you guys can see that. We're gonna switch it to high trash. Now this is going to make me lose potentially very large gold. Um, so I don't know, I mean I could adjust the discrimination on that a little bit to not lose gold. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll go ahead and mess with the discrimination a little bit. So, let's see if I can remember how to do it. Tone. Oh, and we're also in four tone audio right now. So, we're in discrimination. So, we'll go ahead and take that off and that. Uh, I think we'll just leave it at that. Well, we'll go ahead and do one more. There we go. So now we've got um, all from zero on is accepted. And from zero down to negative 95 is going to be discriminated against. So we should not get any iron um, signals. So, all right. So I'm going to just start swinging the coil so you guys can hear it. I've not used this program before, so we'll see how it goes. See so, you now that is because over there we got that little bolt in there so I'm getting close to it. You don't want to get too close to it because the MX Sport is picking up those big chunks of metal from pretty far away. So I think we got some coinage here. Pretty close to it, is that it? Nope. Oh, there it is. We got a dime. All right. And the MX Sport was saying dime. Well, it was jumping around between dime and a penny. This is from 2005. Oops. All right. I think there might have been something else here. All right. So we'll put that in there and we'll check it again. No, oh, nope, that was it. All right. So now you can tell the difference in the sound between the two programs. When I was in um, all metal, it was like, it wasn't very specific sounds, whereas this is kind of like really specific. I'm not, I know I'm not really explaining it very well. Um, yeah. All right, so there's something here. This one's jumping around an awful lot.
Alright, so it's deeper. So let me get out my shovel. There it is. So, it's a piece of a cigar, something or other. <laughs> I, don't know. I guess that was it. Yeah, that was it. All right, so got another target here. And I switched my camera mount because my arm was starting to hurt from having the camera strapped to it, so. Yeah. Alright, so there's something right here. Well, I'm not sure what that is. Some kind of rock. Something. Yeah. Hmm. And the MX Sport was kind of jumping around a little bit on that one. Let's give it a listen to. Hmm. That's saying it's a copper penny. So, yeah, whatever that is, is ringing up as a copper penny. But it is not a copper penny. Or any kind of penny. gold and occasionally foil so it's probably foil yep there it is although I'll give the MX Sport some credit it's gold foil <laughs> oh, it's like a candy or something <laughs> so the MX Sport was right foil and gold gold foil <laughs> yep so that's ringing up as a zinc penny. There it is. There you go. So, it's a penny from 
All right, guys, so here are my findings for today's hunt at the little kitty park um, next to the soccer field. Um, I didn't find really hardly anything fantastic. I picked up a lot of garbage, and I got a lot of foil gum wrapper thingies. Um, and I found this little bitty sequin, um, which is like really, really teeny. I mean, you can see it's on the tip of my finger right there, and the MX Sport found it. Um, so yeah, it wasn't that fantastical. I picked up this glass. It was over by the bench. Then this rock was some, there's some kind of metal in it. I don't know. Um, pull tab and a bullet, which I thought was really weird. It's all kind of crunched up. Um, so that's all the garbage, the nasty old band-aid. And I found four, well, I found five coins. While I was hunting, there was this little kid that was playing on the playground, and he was interested in what I was doing, and so we started tagging along, and he was helping me locate the targets. He was holding, um, Elsie and Seeker, and he was locating the targets for me. So we found a penny, and I let him keep it. <laughs> so I found five coins, but I've only got four here. Um, three pennies and a dime. None of them are very old. I think this is the oldest, and this is 1973. The dime is 05. This penny is uh, 09. And this penny is 15. So, yeah, 1973 is the oldest, and the rest is just junk. Um, I wasn't out there for very long. It started getting really hot. Well, I guess I was actually out there for about two hours. But, um, you know, between all of these little foil wrapper targets and stuff, and then the kid following me around, um, he really kind of delayed progress. <laughs> so I didn't get to search the entire kitty area. Um, and then I started searching over near the bench by the trees, and all of the targets over there seemed to be several inches down. Um, and when you went about five inches down, you started coming into tree branches and stuff. So I just kind of stopped detecting in that area, and then it got really hot. So I was like, all right, I think I'm calling it a day. <laughs> um, but overall, I think the MX Sport worked really great. Um, I don't know that I really like it in um, all metal mode, just because you can hear every little sound, like every little piece of metal that's in the ground, it, it hears it. And I don't necessarily know that I'm a fan of that. I think I preferred it in... Um, like, I think I put it in high trash mode, and I think I'd prefer that one over all metal. But um, I'll be trying it out again, and um, maybe we'll try out the coin and relic one, or the or relic, and then there's a coin and jewelry mode that I could try out. But um, yeah, overall it was a pretty nice day. Um, it was a decent hunt. I wish I had found more, but um, like I said, I was really, I had my hopes set on detecting in that field, and it just didn't work out because they were doing some soccer game over there. So maybe next time, maybe I'll go a little bit earlier next time and get out there. But um, yeah, overall I'm enjoying the MX Sport. Um, I did not use the headphones with it today but because I wanted y'all to hear it. But um, they, it does come with headphones and if you want to go underwater with it, you have to buy the underwater headphones that Whites make specifically for the MX Sport. But, uh, oh, well, if you're interested in um, either the MX Sport or the underwater headphones, um, I've included a link down below that takes you to Kelly Co's website. And I've included another link that takes you to Kelly Co's homepage. And um, you can go there if you're, you know, looking for um, gear for your detector or you're looking for a new detector or you just want to kind of do some window shopping. Use that link down below because it keeps track of the number of people that come to Kelly Co's website from my YouTube channel. So definitely use those links and if you have any questions or comments you can put them in the comments section below or you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and you can send me a message through there. Um, and for those I've included links down below but you can also just search for She Detector and I should be the first one to pull up. Uh, so yeah, I suppose that's about it.